Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today's video we will be going over all of the books that I read in January, better known as my January wrap up. So hey, what's up? How are you? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. I read five books in the month of January. The star ratings definitely are ranging in this stack, and I'm very excited to let you know what I thought about these titles. But before we jump into that, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to support new and emerging authors and help find readers books that they love. The Book of the Month team vets hundreds of books every single month to create a curated selection for us readers so that we could spend more time reading and less time researching. One of my favorite things about Book of the Month is that it is completely risk-free. If you are not in love with any of the choices that month, then you can skip the month, pay nothing, and then pick up where you left off the very next month. Book of the Month is only shipping to U.S. addresses, but it is the place to get the highest quality hardcover back book for just $9.99 using my code BOOKWARUM. And this month in February, I am literally in love with all of the choices. I am so grateful to have them in my hands and be able to talk about them with you guys. The book for historical fiction this month is Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. With piercing insight and profound empathy, acclaimed author Daniel Black illuminates the lived experiences of Black fathers and queer sons, offering an authentic and ultimately hopeful portrait of reckoning and reconciliation. Spare as it is sweeping, poetic as it is compulsively readable, Don't Cry For Me is a monumental novel about one family grappling with love's hard edges and the unexpected places where hope and healing take flight. Another historical fiction book for this month is Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu. Spanning continents and generations, Peach Blossom Spring is a bold and moving look at the history of modern China, told through the journey of one family. It's about the power of our past and the hope for a better future, and this haunting question, what would it mean to finally be home? The fantasy book for this month is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. House of Earth and Blood meets the witch's heart in Rebecca Ross's brilliant first adult fantasy, set on the magical Isle of Cadence, where two childhood enemies must team up to discover why girls are going missing from their clan. With unforgettable characters, a fast-paced plot, and compelling world building, A River Enchanted is a stirring story of duty, love, and the power of true partnership. Within this alliance, it becomes apparent that the trouble with the spirits is far more sinister than they first expected, and an older, darker secret about Cadence lurks beneath the surface, threatening to undo them all. The literary fiction book is Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. Look at this cover. Look at it. <laughs> Our narrator is a popular English professor whose charismatic husband at the same small liberal arts college is under investigation for inappropriate relationships with his former students. The couple had a long maintained comfortable understanding when it came to extramarital pursuits, but with these allegations, life has become far less comfortable for them both. And when our narrator finds herself alarmingly infatuated with Vladimir Vladinsky, a celebrated young novelist newly arrived on campus, their tinderbox world comes dangerously close to exploding. And the thriller pick for this month in February is The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Marissa and Matthew Bishop seem to have it all until Marissa is unfaithful. Beneath their veneer and perfection is a relationship riven by work and lack of intimacy. Marissa wants to repair things for the sake of their eight-year-old son and because she loves her husband. Enter Avery Chambers. Avery is a therapist who lost her professional license. Still, it doesn't stop her from counseling those in crisis, though they have to adhere to her unorthodox methods. And the bishops are desperate. I genuinely don't know which one I would pick if I could only choose one out of these, but my top two would probably be A River Enchanted and Peach Blossom Spring maybe, but honestly, I am so excited for all of these. They all sound so phenomenal. So don't forget you can use my code BOOKWARUM to get your first box for $9.99 using the link down in my description. And thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video and we can get on into the rest of it. The first book that I read in the month of January, it was very fitting. It is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This one I was very nervous for because I loved The Once and Future Witches so much that I was nervous that I wasn't gonna like this one as much. Plus I heard some mixed reviews about it, but I ended up really, really liking it. It seemed very comparable to The Starless Sea, but putting it on the same playing field as The Starless Sea is a little bit rude because The Starless Sea is so poetic, so intricate, and so perfect. And this one is, I feel like it's a little bit more accessible. It seems like a little bit more of a childlike, 
version of the Starless Sea, but I'm not saying that it's a juvenile because it definitely still has adult elements and the storyline is still phenomenal. Alex E. Harrow's writing is one of my favorites. It is just lyrical enough to keep me kind of like in that like web and flow of loving the cadence of the story. And her storytelling is so interesting and just beautiful. Even though I think that I can mentally and emotionally compare it to The Starless Sea, both of the stories are so different. Some of the ideas seem pretty similar, but it's really quite incredible how different the stories are and how good they are on their own. Oh, I did do a reading vlog with this book and the next one that I'll talk about. So I will put the link to that down in the description. I read them in a weekend. Oh, three of these. I read most of these in a weekend. But yeah, this one I really, really liked. I gave it a four out of five and I had a great time reading it. The next one I also read in that weekend. I read this in kind of one sitting. I did a like a weekend readathon basically with my Patreon. We live streamed for over 15 hours together and I finished two and a quarter books. <laughs> so this is the other book that I finished that weekend and it was The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. Um, this one was fine. It was nothing special for me. I, going into it, I was feeling pretty good because I picked this up like right after 10,000 Doors of January because this felt like the vibe. I was like really excited to read like a witchy book and that's definitely what it was, but I think that my issue with it was most of the witchy books that I read have like some sort of eerie or like dark undertone, and this one didn't feel that way at all. It felt more like a vanilla version of like The Magicians or something like that. Our main character just kind of annoyed me half the time. I felt like my, the, the side characters were way more interesting for me, and I genuinely just didn't really care about the plot or what was happening. I think that if I didn't read this in one sitting, then I would have had a hard time picking it back up multiple times, like multiple days in a row. It was a perfect audiobook for me to finish my bullet journal for, because I didn't have to pay attention to it too much, and I could do other things without missing any key points, because there wasn't many of them. Not a, not, a, not a whole lot happened, but it was fine. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I gave it a three. The next book that I read in the month of January, I started in that vlog as well, uh, and it was Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I finally read it. It has been on my shelf forever, but it does have trigger warnings in here that I was just very nervous about. And so I was waiting until I felt like mentally, emotionally ready to read about them. We love self-awareness and I felt ready in January. So I read it and it was absolutely phenomenal. I need, I need the second book. I at least need a date for the second book when it's coming out because I'm hooked. This, this story was so good. I was nervous about this book as well because this is the, obviously the first book that I would have read by Leigh Bardugo that wasn't set in the Grishaverse. And so I didn't know how I was gonna feel. The first hundred pages or so were extremely dense. I, I took them so slow because there was so much information that I was tabbing and taking notes on because I wanted to make sure that I was understanding what was going on. There are so many different secret societies that we follow and our main character, her life and the people that she is interacting with in within these secret societies are so intricate. And I'm so glad that I took my time on the first like 100, 150 pages or so, because after I hit that mark where like the story really started taking off, I felt no like hiccup. I realized at one point in the story, I was like, oh, I just read like 50 pages and I feel great about it. Like I didn't even have to like stop and reread and it just felt like everything was falling into place. And that being said, I loved all of the dark, creepy, maniacal things that was going on and that we were following. And I just think that the world and the magic system and just like the paranormal aspects that we were getting from this book were done and written so well. I am so excited for the next book in this series. I need it now. I gave this book five stars, of course. The next book that I read in January, um, I'm not gonna talk about too much because it's part of a secret vlog. Um, I did read Where the Drama Girls Go by Shauna McGuire. It was the newest installment of the series and it was a very different one from what I can understand. In this one, we find that there is a secondary school. So previously it was just Eleanor West's home for wayward children. Wow, I said that so well, good job. And in this one, we find that there is the White Thorn Institute as well. So it was super cool, but that's all I'm telling you because I am doing a secret reading vlog that included this, but I did read it. And the last book that I read in January was Jade City by Fonda Lee. 
This one, I was in the live show for Mel's read along, the bone along. <laughs> I will leave the link for that live show down in the description because it was so fun. It was me, Mel, Gavin, and Rachel. And we all had really good ideas and really good theories and thoughts that were brought to the table. It was a really great hour and 50 minutes. <laughs> yeah, 50, not 15, an hour and 50 minutes we were on that live show and it was phenomenal. <laughs> the things I really loved about this book were the family dynamics. I thought that they were written really well. And apparently Fonda Lee is like a black belt or something. So the fight scenes in this book were written in a very like articulate and accurate way. I can't relate. I have no way to confirm or deny, but I can confirm that I enjoyed them and they were exciting. I feel like this first book in this series definitely only like scratched at the surface of what we're about to get into. And that makes me extremely anxious, but excited for the next one, which is Jade War, which I'm going to be reading in February. I am doing a read along for this series with my Patreon book club. And I tabbed this book to oblivion. I have a bunch of post-it notes in here. I had a lot of thoughts and I got to really speak my mind in the live show. So I had a great time talking about my favorite characters. Like I love Hilo and Lon, my heart. I love how Fonda Lee also described things like how Jade feels to our characters when they are holding Jade or using Jade. There were just a lot of like fundamental things that I loved about this book. And even though I feel like it was missing maybe something, I, don't, I ended up giving it like a 4.5 out of five because it was great but I didn't get that like, oh my God, this is everything feeling for whatever reason. But I feel like I will get that in Jade War. So I'm very excited to continue the series. I forgot that I also read another book. I finished, but I don't have it. So I have to go get it. Okay, the last book that I read in January, I read in like two days, which I'm really proud of myself for. And it was The Sword of Kaigen. This book is also in a secret reading vlog and this vlog will actually come out much sooner than the one with Where the Drawn Girls Go. So I'm going to reserve most of my thoughts about this book for that vlog because in that vlog I will be going through some spoilery discussions as well as some non-spoilery things. But what I will leave with you for this book is that it gave me a hangover. I didn't want to read anything after it except this book again. So that's how I feel about it and you're just gonna have to wait for the vlog. But that's it. These are all of the books that I read in January. It's kind of a thick stack. Wow, look at me go. And that's really all I have for you today. So thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. If you are still watching, then leave the ocean or the water emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.